SGC here. And what do these two have in common? The Amazing Spider-Man. Emma Stone in Amazing Spider-Man is Gwen Stacy and versus the Lizard Man. This episode, there will be no edits, so it's a challenge. So here we go. So, the lowdown, or the storyline. For those that watch the trailers, you should know what it's about. Lizard against Spider-Man. Who is Lizard? For those who've seen Spider-Man 3, you should know that he's Kurt Connors. Do you know that dude that came without an arm in the storyline? Okay, that totally didn't make sense, but there is no edit here! So, edit cut! What I usually do is just move over, swivel my chair, but here we go. Storyline, Spider-Man, new reboot. He gets his powers, meets the girl, and fights the villain. So, you would ask, why is there a reboot so fast? I mean, we have three Spider-Mans, why not just have a fourth Spider-Man? Well, for you, those that don't care about the movie world, about directors and actors, well, the whole team of Spider-Man 1, 2, 3 left, and now there's a new team for Spider-Man. And, really, with how Spider-Man 3 ended, you can't really start a new Spider-Man 4 with how things ended with Spider-Man 3. So, yeah. And plus, if Sony didn't use Spider-Man property, it would just go back to Marvel, and Sony is not going to lose out on those big money, and Spider-Man is going to make a lot of money. I mean, apparently in Korea and India, Spider-Man opening day made more money than Avengers already. Can you believe that? So, if that carries over to other countries, Spider-Man will make money for Sony, and Sony... Good job, you totally deserve it because the movie was awesome. So, who's the cast? You got, you got, you got, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got Andrew Garfield, who's like that dude from Facebook movie, Social Network, that like the other guy that sort of was the nerd of Mark Zuckerberg. And yeah, Andrew Garfield is Spider Man and he is the scrawny type. He isn't like the buff version of Peter Parker like Tobey Maguire pulled off um, the nerdy side of him is a lot more showing and apparent and then you have Gwen Stacy played by Emma Stone Emma Stone and Gwen Stacy is pretty much the science kid um, really great character for Parker actually I mean Mary Jane people is actually a cliche I think in the movie world where the totally loner, nerdy guy, somehow gets the popular hot girl. Doesn't really make sense, but Gwen here works. Cause, I mean, yeah, Gwen just works. And then you have, <laughs> that's pretty much it for big names. I mean, you have um, Charlie Sheen as Uncle Ben. That's an older person. And yeah. Other names don't really matter, to me anyway. So, what do I like about this movie? Well, it's an origin, and they did it well. I mean, at first it felt kind of like, oh, that's so sad, there's no wrestler scene. But I think it makes sense. Like, it's not as random. I mean, they did do a shout-out to the wrestling sort of thing, so that's not bad, bad. And, um, yeah. Well, this is an edit, because I just woke up. This is going to be the weirdest video ever. Thanks, Joseph. And, um, so what was I talking about? So, let's just go to what I liked. What I liked. The reboot was good. I mean, I accepted the fact it's a reboot, and you just got to move on with that, people. Like, just don't whine about it. Like, oh, why is it a reboot? Like, I want this to happen. I need him to be, like, bit by, like, a radioactive spider. And that, they explained it well. Like, you should go watch the film, and then how they explain it is totally fine. I totally bought it. Um, his organic web shooters are gone, which is awesome, because for me, I always felt that it was weird, because spiders don't shoot their thing, their web, out of their hands or legs anyway. They shoot it out of their butts, so if they want it to be organically real, he should have been shooting webbing out of his butt. But he made his own webbing. Explained in the story... People are complaining that this was sort of not long enough, but I think it was good enough. I mean, like, how much time are we going to spend on, oh, he's a super genius and he's going to 
make some own webbing and make his own thing that <laughs> presses and it just works. Um, Emma Stone. Emma Stone was awesome in this. The whole chemistry between them is r real. Well, pretty much it's real. I mean, they're dating in real life. So that's pretty cool. I mean, Gwen Stacy owns Mary Jane. It was always awkward between Mary Jane and Peter Parker for me during Spidey 1, 2, 3. Like she always just whined and complained about life and just say, I hate you, but I want to love you at the same time. That doesn't really work, people, in real life. So, yeah. The chemistry is good here. Believable. And, yeah. Um, what else I like? Um, the speed. The speed of Spidey is really great. I mean... I, to me, the general feeling from Spidey 1, 2, 3, it just felt like he was really slow. Like, swinging about, but there was no really fighting. I mean, there was good scenes like Cod Gob, the Green Goblin scene in Spider 1. That fight was good, but the other ones were not so great for me. <laughs> so, yeah, and then his, uh, um, just his banter when he's fighting, uh, that's just awesome. He's just really funny. Like, that totally didn't really happen. Like, there's some... They spoil some of it in the trailer, so that sort of sucked. Um, but then one thing is that his... One thing that I sort of dislike is the whole transition from Peter Parker to Spider-Man. There's a huge contrast there that sort of feels kind of weird. But I guess that really goes well with the whole different, like, um, identity thing. Like, no one would could guess that. If, if you faced up Spider-Man, you wouldn't guess that Peter Parker is Spider-Man sort of thing. So that's sort of cool. And, yeah. What I didn't like, well, there were sort of elements that, of, that reminded me of Spider-Man 1. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is, because you will go watch the film and you will feel the same thing when you do watch it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And there's some... There's something that happens at the end that's sort of like, oh, really? Do we really need to have this sort of thing? That sort of drag for me. Um, actually, oh, I forgot. What I really, really liked about this film was that they really captured the whole essence of what Spider-Man is. Like, they captured the whole... Um, the whole... Anyone can be Spider-Man. It's just a mask that gives you... That you can just become stronger. Um, like, that, that's, that's pretty awesome. Like, it goes totally with hand in hand with um stanley's vision of spider-man begin with which is that it, it doesn't matter who it's not really the powers it's just that anyone could be spider-man sort of thing and and they changed one thing they changed which i really loved was the whole um philosophy behind the spider-man film like, like how the first one is a uh, great power brings great responsibility they changed it up and they gave a new one and it, i loved it it's so much better than that one, I think. And, well, talking about Stanley, his cameo is the bomb. I think this would be a spoiler because I'll be setting up your expectations, but this Stanley cameo is the best one that he has done since the beginning of all Stanley cameos in Marvel films, anyway. And, yeah. So, Emma Stone was awesome. Andrew Garfield. His acting is okay-ish. Like, I liked... He's the scrawny type. He was kind of jerk-ish. And, yeah, it was different from Tobey Maguire's acting of Spider-Man or his betrayal of Spider-Man. And I think it was good. Um, there's obviously a sequel. Like, Sony's not going to let this go. And I must say that I'm happy with it. Like, in the, in the point where I hope I can just forget about Spider-Man 1, 2, 3. Sure, there was good stuff coming out of 1, 2, 3 in aspects, but not overall. And I look forward to Spider-Man 2. And if... Yeah, like, just a heads up, there's a reboot for Fantastic Four and Daredevil. Asking why again is the same thing. Production companies need to have those properties under their name, so they have to use them. And if, just looking at first class, how it happened and how Spider-Man happened, I sort of look forward to Fantastic Four. Um, who's, um, it's directed by the guy that did Chronicle, so I look forward to that actually. And Daredevil was directed by David Slade. So that'll be interesting, because he did, like, the tw Twilight stuff. So, I mean, Twilight made a lot of movie. A lot of movie. A lot of money. So, maybe he can carry that and make a lot of money for Daredevil. And hopefully all these other things will have a competition to, uh, to Marvel's properties. Like, it'll make Marvel work more, harder, 
make a run for their money. Because, I mean, like, with what happened with Avengers, there's no competition. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what does Dark Knight? Dark Knight's done, though. Um, oh, yeah, talking about Avengers, um, I would actually go out on a limb and say Spider-Man as a whole was actually better than Avengers. Because, I mean, Avengers really didn't bring anything new to the table as a movie. Like, it, it was awesome in the sense of, like, oh, it was iconic scenes, like, with these characters being the same shot together and fighting and stuff, but yeah, storyline was kind of weak. Uh, that was good, but, um, yeah, bringing back to how I'm comparing Spider-Man to Avengers, like, Spider-Man, there was a change. Like, there was this growth, um, and yeah, so now I'm starting to ramble, so I will end with, like, how one other thing I didn't like was that I didn't like how these characters were actually 17 so it was kind of weird because I teach 17 year olds or I see them usually and then their interactions were kind of like whoa doesn't really feel 17 like they're older or maybe I'm just like oblivious to the world that 17 year olds all around the world I like that but yeah Gwen is only 23 I mean Emma Stone's 23 in real life and Garfield's like 26 or something so well good job for them for portraying teens but yeah Let's end off with a bang. Good thing, rather than something I didn't like, was that um, 3D was good in the sense where it really conveyed the whole sharpness of the thing, of the of the shots that um were really scenic. Scenic, so that was good. Um, 3D overall, I don't really like, but when there's scenic shots, it was pretty good. Like when he was web crawling, that was pretty awesome. And, yeah, actually, the web calling is really awesome in this film. Like, it shows so much more his movement and stuff. And, oh, yeah, for those that don't read the comic, Marvel came out with this issue that pits Spider-Man versus the Lizard just this month, too. So, if you want to see how things are in the comic world, after watching the film, you can go check out this issue, which is issue 688. So that would be pretty awesome for a tie-in, you can see, it would be like, an entry. That's what pretty much why they're doing these comics, is for people that go to the movie and go like, Hey, this month's comic is about Lizard, so maybe I should pick that up, and you'll hopefully snag you up and become a comic reader on a monthly basis, which I hope that would be awesome. I mean, like, it's an awesome choice. It's an awesome thing that they're doing, but, yeah, I don't really know how great that would pan out. Like, would, for me, it was kind of weird. I was like, oh... There was a big event that happened, and now Lizard comes out, just for the movie. But after reading the comic, and going, eh, but when I watched the movie, it was like, whoa, this is pretty awesome. I mean, I read the comic, and now I'm seeing it in movie theater. So that was pretty awesome. So that's it. So this video will totally not be edited, because there was a challenge made out for me by Joseph Mad Montreal Man. Just a little shout-out there, and check out his channel in the description box. And, yeah... And, yeah, hope you will go watch Spider-Man, because I totally loved it, because, I mean, it's Emma Stone being natural blonde, and being just being awesome. And a Spider-Man, who doesn't like Spider-Man? I mean, I don't get why people don't. I mean, he's so, so like, relatable. He's just a normal every day guy, and he just has to do the right thing, because he has powers. So, yeah, check it out. You should always go watch. Not always, but you should seriously go watch this, because it's just awesome, awesome, awesome. So, yeah. See ya.